morning, everyone. So I'm going to talk very briefly about blockchain, which is not an easy thing to do. How many of you are familiar with blockchain? That helps. Okay. In my 35 years as a scientist here at IBM, I have never seen anything come from such obscurity. This was developed technology developed to exchange money by some young mathematicians into such a center stage. At its basis, blockchain is a shared, cryptographically unalterable ledger for recording the history of transactions. That's the definition. But like many things, it's really interesting to say what it's not. And what it's not is centralized. It's not owned by any one party. It is democratized. And that is the important thing, because that, to kind of build on what our, our previous panel was talking about, it increases trust between parties because no one is on top. It, it increases accountability and above all, transparency, which we just heard so much about. Because it, with that kind of transparency, you can enable lower friction. If you look at what a current business environment is like, almost any multi-party thing where you have the producers, the finance, uh, regulatory, warehousing, transport, retail, all of those right now use various ERP systems, various internal systems for maintaining their own records. As things move across that, people have different visions. Each party has a different vision of what the current state is. And there can be disagreements, natural disagreements, etc. Not only that, but there's a lot of friction. Sometimes these are text messages or emails or worse, paper documents. So there's a whole lot of inefficiency in this. It's expensive and it's vulnerable. Anyone can change a record. So what blockchain does is it's a single database that everyone has an identical copy. And when I say everyone, we're talking about enterprises now. We're not talking about you know, the Wild West. IBM has invested a lot of energy in the last year and a half in something we call Hyperledger. It's a permissioned blockchain that it's designed for enterprise. And in that kind of environment, in this same trade cycle, every one of the parties who agree to be part of the consortium of, of this permission chain get visibility to all of the data that they have permission you know, the, the, within this party. That gives them the ability to see where their shipments are, what condition those shipments are in. Everybody has to agree on the current state of things, so no one, there's never a chance of an argument. There is one state of truth that is distributed across every member. No member has priority. And there's permanence, so that if there's ever any sort of debate or regulatory oversight or anything like that, there is a permanent, unalterable record of that. Now, IBM has been one of the founding partners of the Hyperledger movement that we've done with the Apache uh, 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 organization. We now have over 110 member companies and hundreds and hundreds of projects going on around the world. Now, what's interesting is that most people think about blockchain around financial. You know, mostly you'll hear about uh, for retail or trade or, or um, census and things like that. But we at IBM believe that it is absolutely going to transform IoT. And the reason I say that is because I've personally been working in this area for quite a long, a long time. For example, in something like shipping and logistics, where you have you know, one of those trade scenarios like this, where you have a producer, it goes to a warehouse, or it goes to uh, transport, etc. If you want to monitor where your shipment is and what condition it is, it's incredibly important to be able to do it. I'm pleased to say that we are now working with a consortium of the Baltics and Finland in uh, a, a group called Kino out of Kovalo. And this is actually one of the devices that we've built to help test. This device is actually real time talking the last bit into the IBM Hyperledger re region. So this allows us to be able to track uh, shipments all the way through. And this is a pretty exciting kind of thing. I do not suggest carrying this on an airplane in your baggage, though that hasn't worked. But the similar thing, if you have mechanical, we saw about digital twin, when you have parts like an airplane that has literally millions of parts, checking the provenance and the, the version control mechanically so that I can read the barcode off of every little thing and allow that to participate in a blockchain transaction and have a permanent record is very, very good for version control and regulatory. For metering and control, think
things like electric meters or other devices that you want to be able to transact directly with, you can use blockchain as directly in the hardware where you have an unalterable ID in the hardware and it allows you to make a secure transaction. And finally, in supply chain, this is where we're going to hear from our guests. Now, all of you know what supply chain is, but one that you participate in with all the time is food safety. And we are very, very lucky today to have a guest who knows all about that, from number one in the Fortune 100, Fortune 1, the world's largest retailer, 